Hi, I'm Daniel from Ratings.com. Today we're testing the Dell U4919DW monitor. It's the largest monitor from Dell's UltraSharp range, which is aimed at businesses and those that care about color accuracy. It has an IPS panel with a resolution equivalent to two 1440p displays, which we'll talk about later, and a 60Hz refresh rate. In this review, we will start by looking at the design and inputs of the monitor, and then move on to the picture quality. We'll also look at the motion handling and input lag. We'll be closely comparing this monitor with the UltraSharp U3818DW and the LG34WK95U and the double ultrawide Samsung CHG90. So we'll start with the design. Now, the first thing that stands out is the width of this curved monitor. It measures 49 inches diagonal and is equivalent to two 27 inch 1440p monitors placed side by side and without the border between them. This is great for multitasking or those working in an office environment. Other than its size and aspect ratio, it looks like a typical Dell monitor. The central stand supports the monitor well, although it can wobble a bit due to the mass of the monitor at about 25 pounds or 11 kilos without the stand. The stand does allow you to easily adjust the height and tilt back and forth, but there is no option to swivel it from side to side. Due to the size, this isn't a big limitation. The controls are located under the right-hand side of the monitor and have the same control scheme as other Dells. The on-screen display is easy to use and the controls work fine. Now, if we go around to the rear of the monitor, under the cover there is a Visa 100x100 100 100 mount. Below this are the inputs, which can be difficult to access because they're behind the stand and there is no way to rotate this to a more accessible position. There are two HDMI ports, a DisplayPort connection, and a USB-C port, which supports DisplayPort alternative mode, as well as power delivery up to 90 watts. This means you can connect a new MacBook to this port with a single USB-C cable, and the monitor will charge the laptop while acting as a display. There are also two upstream USB 3 Type B ports, so you can use a single keyboard and mouse with two computers, and the monitor will change the connection depending on which display is connected, acting as a KVM. And lastly, the overall build quality of the monitor feels great, so you're unlikely to have any issues with it. So that's it for the design, now onto the picture quality. Due to the width of this monitor, good horizontal viewing angles are important so that the sides of the screen show accurate colors. While the display is curved, the curve radius is 3.8 meters, which is advertised as 3800R, so from a normal viewing distance, the sides of the screen are at a significant angle. The U4919DW has an IPS panel, which offers good viewing angles and an accurate image when viewed at an angle. The vertical viewing angle is less critical, as the angle to a normal viewing position is less. Even so, this monitor offers great performance so the top and bottom of the screen have accurate colors when viewed from in front. Overall, this is a great result and better than monitors with a VA panel like the Samsung CHG90. Now for the brightness. This monitor has a peak brightness of about 350 nits. This remains constant regardless of the content, which is great for overcoming glare in a bright room. On our real scene test pattern, the brightness is in the same ballpark, and any variation is a result of small variations in brightness around the screen due to the uniformity of the display. Speaking of uniformity, the gray uniformity of the unit we bought is great, with very little dirty screen effect. This is good, and shouldn't be distracting in normal use. There is also a feature called uniformity compensation, which can be activated through the on-screen display. We found that as the uniformity of this monitor is already great, this feature isn't very effective. It also has some downsides as it reduces the peak brightness and lowers the contrast ratio, as we'll talk about later. As a result, we recommend leaving this setting disabled. Now, for those in a bright room, a good anti-reflective coating is important to reduce glare. This monitor has great reflection handling with a semi-gloss coating, so it shouldn't present any issues. Note though that the curve does cause reflections to be smeared or distorted, so even small areas of light from windows can be spread out over the whole screen. Now for those in a dark room, a high native contrast ratio is important to produce deep dark scenes. This monitor has a mediocre contrast ratio of about 1200 to 1, so in the dark the blacks can appear grey, which is typical of IPS monitors. If you're not in a dark room though, then this isn't an issue. Note that with the uniformity compensation feature activated, we measured a contrast of 690 to 1, so recommend leaving this option disabled for better dark scene performance.
Another important aspect of dark scene performance is the black uniformity, which can also be called backlight bleed. Note that this does vary between units due to tolerances in the manufacturing process. However, the U4919 we bought is bad with some areas of vertical banding noticeable, as well as backlight bleed near the corners. If you buy this monitor, then please do let us know how yours compares. Now, one area that Dell UltraSharp monitors tend to perform well in is color accuracy as they all come factory calibrated. This monitor is no exception and we found the standard mode most accurate. The color temperature is closest to our target of 6500 Kelvin, and the gamma follows our sRGB target fairly well. For those who care about accurate colors, this is a great result. If you plan to edit photos or print content, however, then you may find the color gamut of this monitor a bit limiting, as it doesn't offer support for the wider Adobe RGB color space. For most people, this isn't an issue though. Note that this monitor also doesn't support HDR, but this is the same as most new monitors as HDR support is not that common. If you care about banding when looking at photos or videos or for gaming, then the ability to display smooth gradients is important. This Dell monitor can display 10-bit gradients very smoothly, which is great. So now onto the motion handling. This and other Dell UltraSharp monitors have a 60Hz panel. This is fine for most people and especially in an office environment, but monitors with a high refresh rate do result in a smoother experience, even if you're just working on documents or browsing the web. This monitor also doesn't support any variable refresh rate features, so it isn't intended for fast-paced gamers. If this is important to you, then check out the Samsung CHG90 with 144Hz refresh rate and FreeSync support. The response time of this monitor is great. There are two response time settings. Normal is our recommended setting as there is very little under or overshoot, so the image appears clear. Fast adds more overshoot, which is visible as a halo or smear behind fast moving objects. Overall, this is better than the U3818DW, which has noticeable motion smearing. Now, the refresh rate of 60fps also limits the input lag of this monitor. This measurement is the time it takes for a signal sent to the display to start to be displayed at the center of the screen. At 60 frames per second and a regular scan-out interval, the screen updates from top to bottom about every 16 and a half milliseconds. This means that there is a minimum of about half this period, or 8 and a half milliseconds between the start of the frame and an update at the center of the screen. This monitor only has a small amount of processing on top of this, resulting in an input lag of about 9 milliseconds. This should be excellent for most people, but if you really care about the smallest amount of delay, then check out the higher frame rate CHD90. Interestingly, when we measured the input lag at a non-native resolution of 3840 by 1080, the delay quadrupled to about 40 milliseconds. This could mean that the scaler adds additional delay, so if you might run the screen at a lower resolution for demanding games, then this could be an issue. So overall, the U4919DW is a very interesting monitor with a non-standard form factor. It's great for office use due to the high resolution and provides an alternative for those who want multiple displays. If you like the form factor and size but don't mind trading some of the resolution for a higher refresh rate, then check out the Samsung CHG90. It's a better choice for fast-paced gamers but has a different panel type, so check out our link below for a comparison. Now, if you like the U4919DW but prefer a monitor with the standard ultrawide aspect ratio, then check out the UltraSharp U3818DW. It also has an IPS panel with similar performance. If you'd like an even higher resolution screen for editing 4K content with pixels to spare, then check out the LG 34WK95U. It also has an IPS panel and a 60Hz refresh rate, but in a smaller 34-inch size and a more traditional ultra-wide resolution. So that's it. Let us know what you think of the Dell U4919DW down below in the comments. Do you prefer two separate 27-inch screens, or would you rather this 49-inch giant? You can check out all of the measurements on our website. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel or become a contributor. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.